All right, hold on. Wait, Glenn, to come to you. Wait, wait for Glenn to come to you. All right, let me check start, again. Start now. All right, start now. Yeah, like from, the beginning. from the beginning. All right, so welcome to Trending Thursday. My name is Glenn Tompkins. Welcome to all that are here. I guess we're starting this over. This is where Jay is doing those. Uh, Glenn is getting the mugs ready. Nah, not yet. Um, so Joey's in the background, making sure that everything is coming across loud and clear. Just let me know. Um, wow, are you guys hearing me? I just need to make sure. Type me, type a, a VV Nation if you can hear me and you can see me, just to make sure, folks. I'm on now for sure. All right, Joey, say I'm on now for sure. I gotta take some coffee though, man. All right, so let's get started. Let's get started. I guys was saying a moment ago this week. I'm going to show you how to utilize uh, the VectorVest system specifically for knowing what industries are rising at any given time, um, whether the market is good, bad, or indifferent. So that is going to be a little segment this week uh, called Rising Industries. It's going to probably be my second story for today because I sent out my alert today <clears throat> for people to know that we will be talking about how to find rising industries. All right. So the VV Nations are coming up. I have my Cafe Bustello. We can hear you. I'm drinking my Cafe Bustello as well in my Starbucks cup. See, I got my little Starbucks cup today. Um, normally, I have either my Duke cup, I think Joey, you know, or, my, or my Michigan cup. All right, go blue. Go, what, go blue. There you go, go blue. All right, hey, the Big Ten started playing already, so it said starting last week. Let's get into what we're going to cover today, all right? <clears throat> we always start off with what's going on in the market because that's important. You guys, as investors in the market, need to know how to trade the, the ongoing market, what's going on. So I always start off with stories talking about what the market's doing, what makes the market do what it's due. So I'm going to jump straight in. Is my mouse, Joey? OMG. Where, there it is. I'm going to jump into my first story. Um, and Joey's going to switch this over. Let's talk about what things are moving in the market right now. I didn't, you notice I didn't even go over the homepage today. I'm going to go straight into what the market is. And then we'll look at the homepage, all right? U.S. durable good orders rose for the fifth consecutive month in September. Interesting thing about these stories is it's all about recovery. It's all about uh, recovery from COVID-19. Not only that... But if there is going to be a stimulus, and it looks like it doesn't look like it's going to be a stimulus coming into the election. Looks like it's going to be after the election before any kind of stimulus is going to be voted on. What else is moving the market? Interestingly, that, you know, I don't like to mix politics in with the market, but we did get the confirmation of our newest uh, Supreme Court justice. All right. So those are the things that help to put some What's a good word I want to use? Solidity? Solidifying what the market is doing? Give the market some semblance of normalcy? I don't think, I think we're still far from a level of normalcy, but the market doesn't like um, indecision. The market doesn't like um, um, any kind of things that, that put the market not at ease. So the market is going through the gyrations of up one day, down one day, up one day, down one day, until we get to the election. The election is going to be a big factor of what's going to move the market. Clarity, that's a good word. I like stability. I like clarity. Uh, those things. And without that, the market's, going to, the market's going to show you that it doesn't like it because the market will be up one day and down the next day. But U.S. durable goods orders rose for the fifth consecutive month in September. It goes to show that uh, due to COVID-19, recovery is kicking in. Um, another side of this story is I've seen stories about the European market or the European countries might be reverting back to some closures due to the rise of COVID-19. I think if we do that again, our market is going to feel the effect of that. All right. So I think that the the existing um, um, situation is going to be or the, the existing administration is going to do everything it can to not put us back into that situation. So durable good orders rising is good for recovery. Um, my next story is economy recovered significant ground in record third quarter GB, GDP rebound. The gross domestic product is huge. Jump out, uh, jump in output follows steep drop early in pandemic. Still analysts project the economy will end 2020 smaller than a year earlier. All right? With COVID-19, I think that we will be lower than we were a year, but I think a rebound coming off of COVID-19 just goes to show how resilient we can be as, if, as a country, 
we pull together all of our um, abilities to to get out of the mar- get out of bad situations. All right, the economy grew to a record pace in the third quarter, increasing seven and a quarter percent, seven and four tenths percent over the prior quarter at thirty three percent annual rate. That's huge. Now we're still below the pre COVID uh, values, but that's still a big jump in one quarter, recovering about two thirds. How about that? Two thirds of the ground it lost earlier in the coronavirus pandemic. The market is definitely trying to come back. I like that idea of thinking about buying a straddle for the election. And you know, I would put a straddle on one of the major indices, the Dow, the NASDAQ, or the S&P. Pretty much, I would do it on the S&P because it tracks 500 stocks. If I'm going to do a straddle, I'd probably do it on the S&P. All right, that may not be a bad play because one of those legs are going to work. And better yet, if you want to play it from a a less expensive way, put a strangle on the S&P. Now, after the election, you got to feel that the market's going to move bigly or, or bigly in one way or the other. All right, so I would play the strangle because it's cheaper and it creates a base on the graph. It looks sort of like this, whereas if I'm looking at a straddle, it looks like that. But the base on the bottom of a strangle means that the stock's price can stay any way down here, but it's really got to move one way or the other. So that is something that I would consider. I like that idea, Marie. I really do like that. Uh, that agree. That I. That. What I'm trying to say, huh? That idea. Thank you. That idea. And the last story is about the uh, GDP again. Thirty-three percent in quarter three, better than expected. I think it was expected to go up thirty-one. We went up thirty-three, so it wasn't much higher than anticipated. So yes, I like the bump up. It wasn't way out of line for what the anticipation was. The anticipation was that it was going to be about 31. It finished a couple of percents higher. All right, that's better than 32% from the Dow Jones uh, uh, Economist survey. All right, so GDP is a good thing, shows recovery. So now let's take all of that information. Now let's go back into the VectorVest software. And here are the stocks that I will be talking about today. And I always look at two stocks or two ways of analyzing the market to determine what's going on and how to take advantage of the market. The news stories talk about what's going on and what's moving the market. And then I'll look at two graphs. If you're a VectorVest subscriber, I'll look at the VVC. The VVC is an indexed arithmetic average of all of the stocks that we track. We currently track over 8,300 stocks. We feel that it is a better representation of the broad market movement. But for those of you who are not VectorVest subscribers, I'll look at the S&P 500 or the uh, SPY. So I'm going to bring up the VVC. I'm going to bring up the SPY. These are the two that we look at graphically to track what's going on in the market. I will right-click. I will view the stock graph. All right. I like to always look at a three-month graph, and I like to put on a 20-day exponential moving average for the more of the medium-term investor to keep a good eye as to what's going on in the market. Here is the VVC, the Vector Vest Composite, due to the news of everything that's going on coming off of this high. Let's go put that up here. Coming off of this high that happened on 10-14 of 2020, the market's pulled back. It pulled back enough that it fell below that 20-day exponential moving average. General rule of thumb when looking at any indice on an ongoing basis for market timing, above the 20-day exponential moving average is a good time to be in the market. Below the exponential moving average, a good time not to be in the market. Currently, we are at a level where we should not be in the market below the 20-day exponential moving average. Nice rebound today. Nice rebound today, but one day doesn't make a trend. So what does this mean? Keep your eye on the market. Let's see as we get closer and closer to election, if that has some legs to keep moving up. I'd look at being more bullish in the market once the VVC crosses above that 20-day exponential moving average. And RT, which looks at the short-term price trend of the market, goes back above one. Let's go take this to the S&P 500. Same kind of scenario. Notice that the graphs look very similar But remember, the S&P only tracks 500 stocks, where the VVC tracks the movement of over 8,000 stocks. Currently below its 20-day exponential moving average, nice rebound today, nice open candle, but still below the 20-day exponential moving average, and that relative timing indicator still below uh, the value of one at this particular point in time. So again, even from the market timing perspective of the spiders, I'd wait to see if we can go above that 20-day exponential moving average and RT go back above one. So we looked at what's going on with the market by way of news, 
Uh, do I want to close this? I think I'll close this. Let's go back to the home page real quick. All right, and let's go take a glance at what you see once you open up the software. We track 8,379 stocks. Here's all of the major indices are up nicely today, a nice rebound from yesterday. No, no one can see what? What's this? What did you do? Stop breaking up stuff. Will you stop touching stuff? Sure. All right. So as I look, all of the major indices are up today. Uh, here's our color guard. We use it like a, a traffic light into the market. Uh, with that, uh, all three colors being represented, the market's having a hard time determining a real true direction in the market. This is a trader's market. You play the up days on the up days. You play the down days on the down days. If you're a longer term investor, you sit on your hands and wait for the market to come to you. That's my guidance based upon the VectorVest software right now. Um, if you're a longer term investor and you're, you know, you got your hands in your pocket, leave them there. I leave them there. If you're still investing in stocks, let your, uh, let your stops manage the trades that you're currently in. All right. Before I move on to my next story, do we have any questions? While I am asking for the questions, please remember, uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit the subscribe button at the bottom of this video. Um, comment and like as well. Let's see how many likes we can get today. Uh, but hit the comment button, hit the like button, follow us. If you want to follow us here on YouTube, by all means, please do so. Take advantage of a trial, 99 cents to get you this kind of information every single day. All right, any questions? Somebody says, I like pins. Well, we're going to take a look at pins today. It's in my list of stocks to look at. Today, I am green light buyer, short term, even day trade if it hits my target. And you know something? As I mentioned, Marie, this is a trader's market right now. You take advantage of the up days on the up days, the down days on the down days. If that's not your way of trading, sit, in your, sit on your hands. Sit on your hands. What do you consider as a long term versus traders? A long term investor, in my opinion, is somebody who's trying to stay in stocks a couple of, couple of weeks at a time. Uh, green light buyer, as Marie talked about, is a good way to do that. Um, looking at any of our market timing signals like the DEW, primary wave, confirmed call, all of those signals can get you into the market at the right time. As a trader, though, I'm looking for the primary wave. That's good for the shorter term trader. If I'm looking to be a longer term investor, I look at something like the DEW. Hopefully that helps you out, Aaron. We have seven different market timing signals to accommodate any type of investor in the market. I have puts on the Dow and the UVixie. Why, if the contras go up, I will take profit on them? Um, if the market, you have puts on the Dow and the UVixie. All right, so that means you're playing them to the downside. Today is an update, though, right? Remember, one day is not a trend, but if you're playing the market to the downside, the market's moving up, just tighten the stops because you don't know what if the market goes up again tomorrow? Then you're incurring bigger losses on those puts. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Um, it looks like that's all of the questions that have come up. I don't want to sell my contras because one day will not change the downside. I agree with that. So, you know, when we looked at the graph, we go back to the graphs. When we looked at the graphs, what did I say? I viewed the stock graph on both of them. They're both still moving down and they're below the 20 day exponential moving average. But Marie, if they start, if the market starts to bounce up, what's going to happen to those puts and to those contras? They're going to both start losing money. All right. All I'm giving you is the wherewithal to watch the market's trend to manage your trades properly. All right. That's all I'm doing. All right. So now let's get to my next story. I, I, it looks like I answered the questions that popped up from that story. Let's get to my next story. This week, remember I told you that I was going to look at the industries or try to show you the industries that are making money and how to do so. I'm going to go back into this software and I'm going to give you a glimpse especially if you're not a subscriber to the software. I'm going to give you a glimpse on the power behind the system of the VectorVest software to help you to make good decisions on what industries are rocking and rolling. We're going to find this in the Unisearch tool, all right? Within the Unisearch tool, you'll notice that we have a folder that says Delta Searches Industries. Delta means percentage change, and I can do a percentage change on anything I want to on any industry I want. So I did a couple of things. I looked back the last four weeks. The last four weeks, and I started on Monday. So let's go back to Monday, uh, which is the last Monday, October 26. And what I did is I did a 10-day price delta on the, 
uh, industries. So I'll double click on the industries uh, on 10 day price delta right here. I'll double click and I'm running it as of the close of business on 1026. I'm looking at the top 10 industries that have gone up the most in price over the last two trading weeks. All right, so on 1026, I'm looking back two weeks in the market and what industries have gone up the most by price. You can do this at any point in time. It's going through a lot of data to give us the top stocks or the top industries. Now, home miscellaneous wares up 14% in two, in two trading weeks. Wow. Bank Southeast up 7.28. And here's the top 10 industries over the last 10 weeks from last month, from this past Monday. And this is a cool thing. Not only will it tell you how much it's moved up, but there's 221 industries in the software. I can see where they reside in the software. So home miscellaneous wares up 14% in 10 days. Number 26 in industries. Wow, that's kind of cool. All right, that's kind of cool. And this is a good way to stay on top of what industries are rocking and rolling at any given time. And this is how I found clean energy back on July 9th of 2024 trending Thursday. So what I did is I did it. I made a sheet. All right. See this sheet. I went back the last four weeks of looking at a 10 day price Delta. And I did a Delta on relative timing, which industries rising up the most by way of relative timing. Uh, the stock's ability to, to be in an uptrend. Which stocks or which industries were going up uh, in the biggest uptrend over the last 10 days as well? So I ran the both of them um, on both this, the price and on RT, 10-day RT Delta on Monday, which industries were going up the most by relative timing. And again, relative timing is something you'll only find in the VectorVest software. That's the only place you'll find it. 99 cents will get you what I'm doing right here, right now. All right, Petroleum International Specialty. ETF shorts, that makes sense as the market is going down. ETF, the short or bearish ETFs are rising to the top of the list. Talk about if this stuff works, good Gordon Gin, it does. Where's my board? Uh, Joey, it's right in front of me. is it right in front of me? Where? Move your hand to the right. Move my hand to the right. You're touching it. Just on your hand. Why did you put it like that? Oh man! All right. So if you're trying to find the the industries that are taking off, this is a good way to get on the plane early enough, or if you want to catch uh, the train early in the station, this is a good way to find out what it, what what uh, industries are moving. But that makes sense. That ETF shorts are rocking and rolling and you're getting that early. So what I did is I went back the last four weeks all right, of doing this and I made this sheet and this sheet tells me that this week, ETF shorts was something to take a look at. So we're gonna take a look at ETF shorts. Over the last week, there was nothing that was in both uh, the last week before that, which was which would have been on what 1019. I did that for both 10 on um, 1019, both the 10 day RT and price delta. Nothing was a match. Two weeks ago, ah, something that people have been talking to me about a lot on YouTube, crypto. Crypto is showing up as a fast moving industry, folks. Now I want you to know that it is more of a speculative play, but when the VectorVest software is giving you an opportunity to play crypto at the right time, it was one of the fastest industries two weeks ago. Um, by the price delta, it was up 21% in two weeks. And on the RT delta, it was up 37%. So when I tell you that crypto, sometimes there's a time to be in crypto and there's a time not to be in cryptos, um, this is at least bringing it to my attention that cryptos is something to keep your eye on. Uh, a couple of weeks before that, or one week before that, also retail department stores was in there. So those are industries that we're going to look at right now. All right. So I did the work and from the work, I'm going to bring up one of the fastest moving industries that really did catch my attention was crypto. All right. So from the crypto, let me tell you why it caught my attention. PayPal, Bitcoin support is a big deal. So now, you remember when, when crypto first came out, it was like a currency, it was a digital currency, and people didn't know what to do with it. It was like, ah, this is going to just be a fad. 
The big boys are starting to get into crypto, folks. PayPal's Bitcoin support is a big deal. PayPal will soon allow you to buy and sell cryptocurrency on its app. PayPal is not a little name out there. The payments company will expand the service to Venmo and eventually allow users to use their crypto to make purchase over 26 million merchants that accept PayPal. Folks, that's huge. All right, more and more companies look like they're jumping on board with crypto as payment. All right, just that's very, very interesting. Uh, what else is here? How about J.B. Morgan Chase takes aim at Square and PayPal with new payment methods, a new payment service? A bank. All right, J.P. Morgan Chase is getting into the whole crypto field as well. Think about it. Think about it. Can you start moving funds bank-wise from place to place by way of crypto? A big bank is getting on board with that. What is the ETF for crypto? I don't have a specific uh, I don't have a specific ETF for crypto just yet, but I haven't found one. Doesn't mean if there's not one out there. I just need to see if I can find one. All right, so I'm just keeping that in mind. I don't have an ETF for crypto, but you know something? I'm going to look that up. ETF for crypto. And if we don't have it, I probably want to get it in. That might be a good way to play. That might be a good way to play. And another one. Bitcoin custodian BitGo on the list as PayPal explorers crypto buys. And that came from uh, Bloomberg. Backed by Goldman Sachs. We already looked at this story about JP Morgan Chase. But backed by Goldman Sachs and Galaxy Digital, among others, BitGo is a so-called Bitcoin custodian helping customers to safely store their holdings. According to, uh, to Bloomberg, PayPal is in talks with BitGo as it looks to purchase uh, looks into purchase of cryptocurrency companies. I think we're going to see a little bit of M&A happen in the crypto space. It looks like we're going to see a little bit of, I, I think you're going to see some M&A as this space starts to grow. So maybe it's coming, it's still a speculative place, but now by way of VectorVest, it's helping to confirm that it may be something to take a look at. So from here, I went to look at the crypto stocks that we have. Um, PayPal was the big story we're looking at. What else is in here? Square. Uh, as a DJ, I use Square as a means of getting payment at a gig instead of having to pay me with a check or a cash. So I've been using Square for a while. Think about it. Pick, uh, Bitcoin may be a part of that as well. JP Morgan Chase is in here and Riot Blockchain. So I'm going to look at these companies that could be affected by this whole Bitcoin deal. Let's go view them in the graph. All right, and put them on a three-month graph. PayPal, look at that news about the Bitcoin being uh, offered to, uh, through PayPal. I like that the RT is currently above one. It's not above the 20-day exponential moving average, but with the Bitcoin story could be a catapult to start to move PayPal higher. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the stock to go above the 20-day exponential moving average. Also knowing that RRT is above one. How about RV and RS? The stock is fundamentally sound getting into this field of Bitcoin. How about that? All right, so this is a good run company. It's got good upside potential. It's got good safety and the RT is above one. Getting into this space, this may not be a bad play, folks. This may not be a bad play. What else is in here? Square, using, utilizing more crypto as well, starting to bounce up off of its level of support. RT is currently above one. The RV on Square, though, is not as good as it is on PayPal. So the upside potential is not there. Earnings per share, positive earnings per share, and Square is growing their earnings at a clip of uh, 16% a year. I'd like to see Square get above that 20-day exponential moving average. JP Morgan, a little bit more Loch Nessy in its move. Nice up day on JP Morgan. Would love to see if it can get above its 20-day exponential moving average. And I would like to see RT go back above one. And then here's Riot, uh, an actual crypto stock. Uh, above, currently above the 20-day exponential moving average. Was pulling back, but where did it stop? Right at that 20-day, RT is currently above one. Still fundamentally not sound yet. RV and RS are not there, but RT is. 
above one. Earnings per share is negative. They're growing their earnings, though, at a clip of 2%. A positive growth on earnings. Earnings per share is probably getting less negative, and that's important, getting less negative. Now, also, what can I look at for cryptocurrency? I do have a list of crypto stocks. Uh, where is it? Crypto stocks. Here they are. Here's the stocks that I have for crypto. Everybody's talking about GBTC. Uh, I guess we still don't have it yet. Uh, what, did, what did you put? A GBTC, GBT. See, we still don't have it. I'm still going to look into our Ohio office to get more stocks in this space added to the software. All right, but notice the relative, uh, the value, safety, and time is the VSTs on these. These are still in that speculative space. All right. Uh, crypto is still in that speculative space, but companies like JP Morgan, companies like PayPal, companies like Square can help to bolster them out of the speculative field and get them higher. So this is talk that keeps coming across my YouTube channel a lot. What I'm telling you is that it's showing up as a rising industry, folks, so don't sleep on it. All right, so don't sleep on it. And I will look at getting more crypto stocks added to the software but right now we only have 12 we only have 12 so we will look at getting more uh added and i am seriously going to look at a an etf for cryptocurrency i think that might be a really good way to go any questions all right any questions as you do that uh also remember that this is a podcast uh, for those of you who may not be able to catch these live, these live sessions, we do have a podcast. Go to your favorite place for finding prod, for finding podcasts and search for Trending Thursdays. Search for Trending Thursdays, and all of our Trending Thursdays are on podcasts. Amazon was a speculative stock at one time. I got you. It sure was. But you notice that cryptocurrency, as long as it's been out, has stayed in that speculative space. But I'm thinking that big companies are jumping on board with it. This could be a time to really start looking at cryptocurrency. I'm not telling you to back up the truck and go full bore. Not telling you that. But what I am telling you is to keep your eye on it. And I learned about this from our Rising Industries research. And again, as a VectorVest subscriber, with even that 99 cent trial, you have the capability of doing this. All right, so... Uh, I want to, all you guys keep talking about it. I want to make sure that the VectorVest software is behind it before I really present it. So there we go. That's all the questions. All right. With that being said, let's get to our next story. All right. Our next story is getting into coronavirus. Always got to talk about coronavirus, right? Operation Warp Speed is in full effect. How about U.S. strikes a deal with Lilly for potential COVID-19 antibody? This is the third company that um, the government has partnered up with to get the vaccine out. Uh, mRNA was a company. Uh, Pfizer was another company. Gilead was another company. And now we have Eli Lilly. So the government is doing everything it can to really put some fire on the folks to incentivize them to get a vaccine to market early. All right, so this is big news. And how much money? $1.19 billion. All right, they're going to pay them um, to secure nearly 1 million doses of his experimental. That's the, this is the scary word, the experimental COVID-19 antibody treatment. Lily will start delivering 300,000 doses of the treatment for which is being paid $375 million within two months of receiving emergency use authorization from the health regulator, the company said. Man. All right. Now, I'm all about trying to get a vaccine, but the vaccines have gone through their process extremely quickly. Makes me a little leery. Makes me a little leery. But nonetheless, <clears throat> the government is putting money behind some of these drug companies to get their vaccine out to the people. Why? Because people are really, really concerned about it. I think we're going to get to a point that every year we're going to go to the doctor. We're going to get a pneumonia shot. We're going to get a flu shot and we're going to get a COVID shot. I think that that's where we're looking at. To get back to normalcy, we're going to get those three shots. I think that that's what's going to happen. And Johnson & Johnson, thank you for that, Marie, is another company that's on the, the government's list uh, to get money to as well. All right, so the government is putting out a lot of dough. They got, you know, they putting out Joey-type dough. All right, Joey got like a couple million dollars sitting in his pocket. Yo, what about that million dollars you got right there? Special units? Huh? 
that? You owe me a million dollars. You still owe me a million dollars. I'm still looking for it. I got it in the car. You got it in the car? All right, because if you don't get it to me today, <laughs> that's what's finna happen. All right, long, listen, I'm keeping it 100. Straight up money. Go get my money. All right. Anyway, so I'm sorry you had to see that that personal tip tap between me and Joey, but sometimes it's got to come out in the clean, got to come out in the wash, right? All right. So with that, a lot of money being pushed behind these companies to get the coronavirus um, vaccine out. So let's go take a look at our coronavirus stocks. Let's go back in here. Um, let's go back to my watch list for today, 10, 19, 20, 10, 10, 29, 20. There we go. What stocks? I only had Lily in here because that was the stock that made the news. So Eli Lilly is in there. Uh, let's analyze it real quick. The stock is trading at 132. It's got a value of 187. I love that the stock as a pharmaceutical st company is undervalued. Look at the upside potential on it. Relative value. This stock has got good upside potential as compared to a AAA corporate bond. It is a safe stock. What's hurting Lilly right now is the relative timing. The stock is officially still in a downtrend right now. This news may bolster it. And if I'm looking to get into this, I would really like to see the relative timing of Lilly get back above one to show me that it's in an uptrend. It's got earnings of $7.67 and they grow their earnings at a clip of 18% which is sort of kind of unheard of for a pharmaceutical company. A lot of pharmaceutical companies have negative earnings. Why? Because they put so much money into research, and a lot of times the drug goes out to the FDA and it gets turned down. They put a lot of money out there without a lot of return, which is another reason why drug prices are so expensive. Drug companies got to try to recoup a lot of this money that they put into research and development. And I think that everybody says, well, the drug companies are greedy. Well, that's part of it. But I think a lot of why drug prices are so expensive is because these companies put out so much money to put a drug into circulation. A lot of times they go out and they don't make it and they lose money and they lose a lot of money and they're trying to recoup some of it by charging higher prices on drugs. All right. Um, let's go look at the stocks graph. Let's go take a look at it. View the stock graph. Eli Lilly in a downtrend. It's put on a three-month graph. Definitely in a downtrend. Even every time it gets above the 20-day exponential moving average, Eli Lilly still keeps moving. Now, is the news enough to start pushing the stock price higher? Let's go see. I'm not a fan of it right now. From a trade perspective, on an update, I'll take it. But it's a trade. It is not a longer-term uh, investment. Not until the stock can get above that 20-day exponential moving average. I love the earnings per share on it. Remember, earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. This is a good run company. They make money. They do make money, but um, right now, below that 20-day exponential moving average, I would be careful with it. But out on an update, I played on an update. Notice one, two, three, four, five, six up days here. Was this a good opportunity to make some money short term? Absolutely, until it turned back around and came back down. Be careful. Overall, Lily is in a downtrend, but the news could bolster it. Let the stock come to you. Now, that's one stock that we're looking at. Let's go to our coronavirus watch list. In this list, we have about 40 some odd stocks. Oh, we got 50 stocks in here right now. Now, the cool thing about this is if I ever want to play what coronavirus stock is the is the is the mover i can always sort this list by percentage price change and like gnpx a lot of these are going to be trades but these can be, be some really good short-term trades to make money on all right mrna up nine percent today novavax up nine percent today vax are up in six percent today and you ask any of my jockey club members in here how about we've made money on some of these stocks from a day trade perspective? This is a good list of stocks to keep your eyes on. And as a VectorVest subscriber or a trial subscriber, you have your own list of coronavirus stocks automatically in the software. 99 cents gets you that data as well. You have your own list of coronavirus watch, uh, our own list of coronavirus stocks that you can sort by percentage price change on a daily basis and make money. Folks, you know something, for any of you guys who are sitting still waiting before taking the 99 cent trial, I don't know what more I can do to get you to that point. It's 99 cents for 30 days. And a lot of what I show you here in Trending Thursday, you have the rights to. I don't know what, not, what, what more, you, you say, well, you can give it to me free. Get over yourself. 
It's 99 cents. It's worth something. Have some skin in the game. Stop trying to just, well, I want it all for free. Fine. Then guess what? Don't get it for 99 cents and don't use the data. It's up to you. It's 99 cents, folks. And if you're investing in the market and you can't pony up 99 cents for 30 days, good Gordon Jim, that's all I got to say. And now I'm going to go back to my inside voice because I don't know what more I can do for you from that perspective. All right. I don't know what more you can I can do for you from that perspective. All right. So that's all coronavirus stocks. No questions. I didn't see any questions. Well, Bitcoin will will replace cash within three years, says Scott. Global initiative to be able to further track and control the masses along with the COVID app. Uh, that everyone will need to have. And oh my gosh, I'm not going down that that path, Scott. I'm not going down that path. I hear you. I hear you, but I'm not going down that path. All right, I'm just not. All right, so keeping that in mind, this is a great way to always find some great trades in the software is to look at coronavirus stocks. All right, let's move on to my watch list. Let's go back to my watches. Is now a buy day now? Ramen. So what am I looking for to determine whether or not if today is a good buy day or not? What do I look for? Well, I look at the market timing graph. Let's go back to the graph. Let's go look at the market timing graph. This is going to help me. As a day trader, I have intraday data. So let's do that. Intraday, five-minute bars, current day. Look at this. I can watch the market throughout the day and help me to determine whether or not I want to be in the market at any given time throughout the day. I do have, ooh, where's my timing? Interesting. Um, I do have a day trading timing signal if I have real time in the derby, which will give me a signal throughout the day whether I need to be bullish or bearish. All right, so I can do that. Is there an ETF for coronavirus stocks? Yes, there's a couple of ETFs. Uh, LABD or LABU is a good one for pharmaceutical stocks, LABU for the upside, LABD for the downside. And there's another one, I think it's called IIIB um, for that industry, IIIB. No, I, I, there's another one specifically for pharmaceuticals. I forget what it is. IB something, IB, IBIO. Uh, is it IBIO? No, that's not what I'm looking for. I be, there is one, I forget what it is. I forget what it is, uh, but there is another one. But if you're looking for um, an ETF for pharmaceutical, L-A-B-U for the upside of the pharmaceuticals, L-A-B-D for the downside of the pharmaceuticals. Is it A-B-E-O? I don't think that that's the stock. I think you just want me to look at that stock. And I'm not going to look at it if it's not what I'm looking for. A-B-E-O? Uh, nope, that is an individual stock. I'm looking for an ETF. Is it I-B-B? I, I think. There it is. That's another one. I-B-B is an ETF for the whole biotech. So as, as well as L-A-B-U for the upside as well. So there are ETFs for... Huh? XBI? It was another one, XBI? Oh, no, no, XBI. I, it might be it, too. So all of these are ETFs. IBB for a biotech, uh, LABU for a biotech, and XBI for biotech. So good answer, good question. But there's several different ETFs to play the pharmaceuticals. So great question. There's about seven of them. There's about seven of them. Wow, SBIO, B-Tech, there's a few of them. So at least I knew a couple off the top of my head. If you Google them, you can find more of them. But keep in mind, if they all do the same thing, you just got to pick which one you want. You don't need to be in all of them. If that's the case, you might as well be in 10 stocks in that industry, right? All right, so just keep that in mind. The in-depth reports on each stocks are invaluable for understanding the stock's value. All right, and I agree with that. I can. Uh, Joey's going to put in a link if you want to look at a full stock analysis on any stock that we track, uh, you can click it. You can get up to X amount for free. Joey's going to put a link in there. You can type that in, put your email in, type in the stock, and you can get a free stock analysis on every or any stock that you want. All right, it's time to move on to my next story. All right, it's time to move on to my next story. My next story, I got to sound it like that. I got to move on to my next story right there. All right, so let's, that was pretty creepy, wasn't it, Joey? All right, so now let's talk about stocks and earnings. Let's see what stocks hit some earnings. UPS profits, 
Todd, twelve percent is uh, profits rise. Twelve percent is pandemic spurs home deliveries. That's a stock that should gone up, gone up beat earnings. Why? What else? Amazon should have been another one that hit because a lot of people in their mama, everybody in their mama is ordering stuff online. Uh, how about Shopify in Canada? That's Can uh, Canadians. That's Canada's um, um, Amazon. Shopify, Alibaba, that's the Chinese version of Amazon. All of these companies are probably doing well because I know that my wife uses a lot of uh, Amazon and I think she's possibly keeping Amazon afloat all by herself. Where I, on the other hand, with all of the Apple gear I have, my, my iPads and my watch and my phone and all of that, I'm probably keeping Apple alive all by myself. So between us, I think my wife and I are keeping the NASDAQ up. Between Amazon and Apple, thank us. Everybody should send me a check. My wife and I a check because we're keeping the NASDAQ up. I want you to know that. We're keeping the NASDAQ up with Apple and with Amazon. So just putting that out there. All right. So uh, UPS profits rise 12%. That's a good beat for them. Uh, what else is in here? General Electric shares jump after company post surprise adjusted third quarter profit revenue tops expectations. Now, GE is coming into uh, the electric field. Who was, who was the company they bought 11% of? Gosh, darn it. I forgot. I got to go back in, in time and look. I do so many stories. Um, who did they pick up 11% of? I know there was a whole bunch of stuff going on. Who did they pick up 11% of? Can anybody tell me? Uh, was it H-Y-L-N? Was that it? Uh, can anybody Can anybody tell me? I forget who it was, but they bought 11% of them. Or they were going to buy 11% of them. Does anybody remember? I'm thinking about it, it might have been H-Y-L-N. I think it might have been. I think Joey is right. Joey listens to all of my stories. No, oh, it was, it was Nicola? It was Nicola. That's who it was. It was Nicola. Solo is a different, is a different story, Devendra. It was Nicola. So um, they're getting into the electric field. I think, um, I think a lot of the share jumping, a lot of it is getting into that field. Uh, I did, it, Solo was a different company. Solo had something else. I don't think it was GE, though. I don't think GE and Solo, I did that as a stock. As, man, folks, you just go to the show now how many stocks I've done as stocks of interest, right? Man, that's kind of cool. All right? I've got a little bit of a, of a background now that goes on this. IPHI and cash are near moon. Uh, I know. I know. Hold off on the individual stocks. You guys keep putting stocks in here. I'm going to stop looking at them. All right. Don't take away my chat, Joey, because every time I get off track, Joey takes away track, takes away um, my chat. So Nicola, I think, is a good part of GE growing as well. What do you think of Neo? I haven't gotten near yet. I haven't gotten near. So I just said I'm not looking at stocks just quite yet. What else is in my stories? Microsoft. Microsoft dips on weak revenue. Microsoft re, uh, results beat across the board as Azure grew more than some of the analysts had expected, although guidance for the next quarter was soft. So you know something? I can look at a stock like uh, Microsoft. Probably the relative safety on the stock was nice and high. But what happens? I don't have an indicator that talks about um, forward guidance. I don't have that kind of indicator. And because I don't, it makes it tough. Microsoft beat, but you know, forward guidance wasn't there. It's an electric station for EV. I think the electric station that I'm looking at for EV happened to have been Blink, B-L-N-K. That's the electric station that I'm looking for all of you to keep your eyes on. Solo may be in that group as well, but B-L-N-K is a definite uh, company to keep your eyes on for recharging vehicles, for recharging vehicles. All right, so... Uh, the company's gross margin is benefiting for an accounting change related to depreciation of server equipment. And you know something? Another thing that came out about Microsoft is that they're moving more to the laptop field, more so than the commercial towers. Well, it's because a lot of people are working from at home now. People don't want to bring those towers home. They'd rather work on a good quality laptop. And I think uh, that commercial business is hurting them. I think that their guidance on their commercial business is what's hurting them as well. They are a big, you know, every company that you go to normally has Microsoft machines. Ours do. We got Microsoft machines. All right. And but if people are not going back to work and they're working from home and companies are OK with that, that part of their field, that part of their business is going to suffer. And I think that that's a big part 
of the forward guidance. 3M, 3M tops earnings expected, uh, 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 earnings top expectations, expectations, wow, amid strong personal safety equipment. They're making stuff. They're making masks. Uh, sales from 3M's healthcare segment popped more than 25% to $2.2 billion, driven by gains in medical solutions, separation and purification of oral care equipment. So you know, you know companies that survive anything are companies that can adapt. 3M, how about uh, Ford was doing, was it Ford? Was it Ford? Was it Ford? I think Ford was using one of their closed down factories to help bring up or create uh, or make ventilators. Any company that can overcome, adapt, and adjust, the same thing I learned in the Marine Corps, you need to overcome, adapt, and adjust and companies that can do that are companies that will survive any kind of calamity that happens. So 3M is doing it. Ford was doing it for the ventilators. 3M is doing it, you know, and, and because they're doing it and they're making the money, that was a good way for them to keep on going. Um, Glenn would need to see your mug before he gives you one. What are you talking about, David? Uh, GM did that too. So GM did it. Ford did it. A lot of people are jumping on board with, Trying to make money where the money, you know, they got to get the money where the money can get got. You know something? They got to get the money where the money can get got. All right, so 3M pops on earnings. How about Pinterest? I see the the state, uh, um, the, uh, un, the, the, the notations in here about <clears throat> Pinterest. Coldhammer says, Glenn, what, let me know what you hear about 6G tech and who's providing it. I don't know nothing about 6G tech. I'm still trying to wrap my head around 5G tech. I don't know who's out there doing 6G tech. You know something, though? It might be something I got to look into. Uh, 6G, I'll look into it. I haven't seen any stories on it, <clears throat> but maybe I can bring it to your attention here on Trending Thursday. I haven't seen that at all yet. You ever heard anything about 6G yet at all? I don't know. Don't take it away. I'm, I'm doing good today. I really am. I'm doing that on purpose. Leave me alone. I'm doing, I am doing good. <clears throat> I am doing good. All right. So Pinterest shares are soaring up 28% after the company delivers a monster quarter. You know, the only thing I look at Pinterest for is for like, um, Recipes. recipes. How do you know that? Because you always say that. Oh, because I always say that? All right. Well, that's the only thing I ever look at Pinterest for. All right. All, my main social media is, is Twitter and Instagram. By the way, if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, look for at Glenn Tompkins Jr. on either Twitter or Instagram. And I do post a lot of stuff about Vector Vest on those throughout the day. I haven't lately. I've just been really, really busy. All right. So those are my companies, some of the companies. Uh, that I wanted to take a look at uh, that had hit earnings. So we'll go to Pinterest, we'll go to Microsoft, we'll go to GE, we'll go to UPS, we'll go to 3M. I think those are the companies that I had. Five, one, two, three, four, five, I got five. So those are the five companies that I had for, in, uh, for beating earnings. Um, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, baby. Let's talk about all these stocks. We we gonna all right, anyway. So Pinterest. Let's talk about Pinterest. Let's analyze Pinterest. So the stock meet that had beat earnings. All right. I know. Remember, I didn't look at every stock that beat earnings. I know Apple comes out today, though. Apple comes out today. Apple's not out yet, but I remember I said these are only a few of the stocks that I saw that I wanted to present here for um, uh, earnings. All right, Pinterest. $62 value, $5.33, way over its value. Microsoft, 206 with a value of 152, over its value. General Electric, trading at 738, value 878, uh, under its value. United Parcel, 162, value 124, over its value. 3M, 158, value of 151, slightly over its value. For those of you who are brand new, what is the vector vest value? Value is what we feel a stock is currently worth based on earnings growth rate versus on its earnings per share, uh, based on things like that, amongst other things that make it a proprietary indicator. Value is what we feel a stock is worth. Now, when you look at a stock like Pinterest, that's overvalued. That may not always be a bad thing. It just means that people are willing to pay a premium to own the stock. So with that, let's do the further analysis. Now we look at our five 
proprietary indicators which help you to make a better decision on a stock, better than any other information that you'll get out on the web and even through your broker, all right? Relative value, RV, looks at a stock's long-term price appreciation potential. We compare it to an alternative investment in a AAA corporate bond. So what does that mean? When you buy a bond, you buy it, it matures, you get your money back with a small interest. It's a pretty safe investment. We compare that AAA corporate bond to the stock by way of its RV. Below the value of one, now all five of these indicators are on that scale between zero and two, where above one is favorable and below one is unfavorable. Relative value, or the upside potential on pins, is at 0.75, below the value of one. This upside potential, the... AAA corporate bond most likely will outperform PINs over the next, or Pinterest, over the next one to three years. Hmm, all right. Microsoft has got a relative value at 1.20. This stock, Microsoft, should outperform that AAA corporate bond by 20% over the next one to three years. So looking at what relative value will do, it will give you a sense of the stock's long-term upside potential. Do I want to own this stock long term? Microsoft says yes, whereas Pinterest says no by way of RV. General Electric, relative value at 1.7, 1.17, higher than zero, or sorry, higher than one, so it should outperform that AAA corporate bond by 17%. Long term, I don't mind owning GE. United Parcel Service, 0.89 on RV. Hmm. That AAA corporate bond should outperform United Parcel Service over the next one to three years. Hmm. All right, keep that in mind. 3M, it's got a relative value of 0.91, below the value of one. That AAA corporate bond should outperform 3M over the next one to three years. So I can determine whether the stock is under or overvalued, and then I can determine if a stock is worth me holding long term as compared to a AAA corporate bond. Let's go to relative safety. It's an indicator of risk right off the bat. Relative safety looks at the consistency and predictability of a company's financial performance. Can I be sure that when earnings comes out that this stock has got a high probability of meeting or exceeding earnings? Why is that important? Because earnings is the engine that drives a stock's price higher. So if I've got a company that's got riding er rising earnings, that becomes very attractive to investors, thus driving the stock's price higher. Now, relative safety below one tells me the stock has got a little bit more risk, which means I need to trade it a little differently. Pinterest, it's got a relative safety below the value of one at 0 0.93. This is a little bit more of a risky stock. Whereas Microsoft has got a relative safety at 1.39. So it's got good ups side potential and it's got good relative safety, this is a good fundamentally sound stock. It is a stock that's got good upside potential with good non-risk factors. Okay. General Electric, relative safety at 0 0.82, a little bit more risky because it is below the value of one, where UPS has got a relative safety at 1.12. Hmm. This stock should meet or exceed its earnings expectations quarter over quarter, year over year. All right. And the last one, 3M, with a relative, uh, relative safety at 0 0.95, below the value of one, a little bit more risky. Now, let's talk about if these stocks are moving up or moving down right now. Relative, relative timing is that indicator. Above one on relative timing, the stock's in an uptrend. Below the value of one, the stock's in a downtrend. Pinterest has got an RT at 1.85, one of the highest. Uh, it is the highest in my list. Pinterest is the stock that's moving up the most. Well, because of earnings, it's up 26% today. I like that. Microsoft, even though it's a fundamentally sound stock with relative value and relative safety above one, look at the relative timing. The stock is in a downtrend. You know, a stock could be fundamentally sound, but it could just be the wrong time to be in a fundamentally sound stock. And that's what's going on with Microsoft right now. Next stock, General Electric, RT above one, stocks in an uptrend. United Parcel, relative timing at 1.03, in an uptrend. 3M, with a relative timing at 0.82, in a downtrend. This is the kind of information that makes the difference in helping you to make the right decision on a stock and not. This is the only kind, this is this information is the only the only place you can get this information is from VectorVest. Joey's gonna put the link in again for a 99 cent trial. You guys need to take it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Listen, I'm driving a lot of y'all to water. All you need to do is stick your little tongue out and drink it. That's what you need to do. 99 cents is the way to stick your little tongue out and drink the water. The water's right there. Come on in, the water's fine.
$0.99 cents to get this kind of analysis on every stock that we track. Then you can see which stocks have a buy, hold, or sell recommendations, which ones have good earnings growth, and which ones have positive earnings. This is how you analyze a stock in the market. I don't care who you look at on YouTube. Nobody analyzes stocks like this. Nobody. And if there is somebody out there, I challenge you to bring them to me and show me in the chat uh, any company that analyzes stocks the way that we do. I challenge you. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. If not, spend the 99 cents. That's all I got to say about that. All right. So with that being said, let's take a look at these stocks. Oh, man, they all went away. Good Lord. Uh, what was it? Pins, Microsoft, UPS. 3M, GE, and GE. Let's go look at them now that they're all highlighted. Let's go see if, by way of meeting or exceeding earnings, if what they look like. Oh, I like Pinterest. Pinterest was up today a lot. Look at the big wick at the top. A lot of volume. Nice move. I can go put earnings on. Today was an earnings play. Oh, earning. Oh, uh, yeah. There's my earnings. There's my earnings. Today was it was an earnings day. A lot of give back on the move up from the stock. The stock moved from forty nine dollars from the close of yesterday up to almost seventy bucks. Yeah, I think that's going to be a lot of profit taken. That is what I'm talking about. Be careful with stocks that beat earnings and jump up. That was a beautiful gap up, but a lot of give back. Uh, it is clearly, look at all of this time it's been above the 20-day exponential moving average. How about going into earnings with a relative safety, uh, just slightly above, below one, but look at the price action. That was a good stock to hold through earnings. And you know something, if you want to put some protection, buy a protective put just in case it went down. All right, but nicely moving up today. What else is in here? Microsoft beat earnings, nice update today. But look at where Microsoft is as of right now, below the 20-day exponential moving average. Earnings looks beautiful. Are T shows me that the stock is in an, uh, a downtrend right now. I would definitely wait to see if the stock could get back above the 20-day exponential moving average and RT go above one. All right. I look at United Parcel Service. It hit good earnings. Nice open candle. I like that relative timing is back above one. Every time it has been, look at the stock's price move to the upside. That's a good early sign. If I want to be a little aggressive, I wouldn't mind pulling the trigger on United Parcel today. Nice up day with RT above one. If I want to be a little bit more um Confirm, get a little bit more confirmation. Let's see if it can go up above the 20 day exponential moving average. 3M beat earnings, but ah, not. It needs a little bit more than just beating earnings to, to catch my attention. It is clearly below the 20 day exponential moving average. RT is below one. Earnings looks great. I really need the price to start moving up um, before I think about pulling the trigger on it. Um, GE, nicely moving higher since about. Uh, September, a little pullback here going into the earnings play, even with the earnings, uh, I, big down day. I definitely want to buy on an update. The stock is clearly above the 20-day uh, exponential moving average. RT is above one. Volume's been pretty steady. Earnings per share, though, is falling. It is positive, but look over the last three months, earnings per share is falling. Be careful with it. This is why we go just beyond the news and we do the analysis that we do. All right, any questions on the stocks? that I have from earnings. Uh, any stock, I have mobile subscription, like to upgrade, which desktop would you recommend that's good enough to upgrade? Ramen, I would go with the end of day until you get, I would definitely go with the end of day version until you get really acclimated with the software. Everything that I'm showing you here can be used in the end of day person, and can be used in the end of day service. 6G coined by Ray Blank for the proposed low earth orbit internet satellite service. What? I don't know, Roderick. I got to peep that out. I don't know anything on 6G as of yet. All right, there you go. Lawrence says, take their sub deal. I, you know, folks, again, 99 cents, folks. Click on that link. You got to click on that link so that we know that you're subscribing from YouTube to get that 99 cent trial. All right, the last thing I got to do today is my stocks of interest. All right, let's go get into my stocks of interest. I've only got a couple. All right, Boeing is in here. Boeing to cut 7,000 more jobs as pandemic hits the aircraft demand. Man, Boeing is just a, a, a big stock of just badness. It's, it's just that 757 max, 37 max, whatever it is, just really screwed them up a lot. Those accidents, those deaths really messed them up. They really haven't been able to overcome that at all. All right, they put a lot of their hopes and dreams on that plane. 
They put a lot of hopes and dreams on that plane. And right now, it still hasn't been able to turn around on what to do. So that's just bad news for them. And then my other big story is that Facebook, Google, Twitter CEOs take heat on the the Senate over content. The Department of Justice is suing uh, a lot of these social media stocks. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, blah, 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 blah. An apparent double standard in selective censorship during the 2020 elections suppressed conservative voices on the internet, prompting the need for change, and da, 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 da. Right? It takes me back into being more political, but these companies are on the forefront of being sued by the Department of Justice. All right, so um, we'll, keep that in, we'll keep that in mind. We'll definitely keep that in mind but i wanted to look at these companies as they are making the news and see how they are being affected by it within the vector vest software so we're going to look at paypal we're going to look at google we're going to look at twitter i think that was it right uh, boeing google facebook twitter. boeing was my last one look at where boeing sits boeing is the last stock sorted by our master indicator vst that, that pretty much tells you the whole story about Boeing. Now, someone did say that Boeing is transitioning to Space Force projects. I, if that's the case, um, that may help to pull this. You know, I still, I, as a Marine, I wonder if the Space Force is higher than the Coast Guard. Or is the Coast Guard still at the bottom of the, of the rung? I'm just asking. I'm just asking for a friend. I'm just, <laughs> I'm getting ready to stir the pot up in here. I'm sorry about that, but um, I, I'm just curious. So, you know, um, Boeing should spin off to commercial division. They might, Tony. I'm thinking that right now is this has been a strong company in the aerospace and defense industry, and I'm just, I don't know. 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 All right. So let's just look at these stocks real quick. Let's view them on a stock graph. And Facebook. These are the companies that are under... Um, the suit by the Department of Justice. All right, Facebook's still trundling along, and a lot of a lot of it is um, that they're censoring out uh, conservative views on Facebook. You know, whether that's the truth or not, all I'm really worried about is if I need to be in the stock. Currently, as I look at the stock right now, the stock has got its own. Stop that. Horizontal, not horizontal cursor. Take that off. That's not what I'm looking for. Horizontal line, and put that back on date line. I noticed that the stock has got its own little level of resistance right here, sitting at about 285, uh, 285, $285. Let's go make that a little darker. It's got its own little level of resistance right there. I definitely want to see if the stock can break above that. It is above the 30 day exponential, uh, 20 day exponential moving average. Earnings per share looks good. RT is above one. Even with the news about what's going on with it, it is hitting that level of 285. If it breaks above, that would be a good buying opportunity. I'm looking at Google. Big update today on Google. Look at that. Nice open candle. Earnings per share. RT rising. I'm thinking that these companies that are under the the judgment right now uh, from the Department of Justice, these companies are still rock and rolling. I like that it's above the 20 day exponential moving average. RT recently went back above one. Ah, this may not be a bad play either. So that Twitter, look, Twitter is just out of the three. Is 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 the is the Twitter is the is the twit, <laughs> twit twit yeah. Twitter's moving. Twitter is moving. Look at that. Yeah. I almost cussed, see? I almost cussed, but I didn't. But Twitter is moving. I like that out of the social media stocks right now that looks like the goodest one. Yes, I said goodest because it's bigly. Yes, I said bigly. All right, it's definitely moving higher. This would be my my stock of choice. I'd go 12 cents higher than the high if I'm not in it. If I'm already in it, leave it alone. Big volume today. Uh, what else is here? Boeing is just a story of badness. It just is. Over this last three months, the stock is trending down. It's approaching uh, the three-month low, which occurred back here on, uh, what date is that? On 924. All right, look at where we are right now, just Boeing. And whether they're transitioning or should spin off or whatever, I don't care. All I'm looking at is, should I be in the stock right now? I'm not thinking about being in Boeing at this time. Now, if what they're doing is transitioning or whatever, then let it come to you. Right now, I'm not going, based off of that news, I'm not ready to jump on board with Boeing. 
Hi, any stories on my stocks of interest? Any stories on my stock of interest? Type it in now. Always remember to um, look down below this video right here. We have our merchandise store. If you want to get our mugs or a shirt off of VV Nation, you can take advantage of that right below the video right now. Um, Two Cents says, I'm in the 99 cent trial and loving it. Which stat or indicator do you use to see if trending stocks that are all-time highs but still have time to run? You know, that's a good way to go. Let's go to the Unisearch tool. You want to find stocks. How about um, high-low searches? Let's go find stocks uh, that are hitting a new 52-week high. I can do that. Let's go run that as of right now. I can run, here's stocks that are hitting a new 52-week high. Now, you want to ask the question if they still have the ability to rise, right? How cool, how quickly did I do that? That was 1019, sorry. Let's run it as of today. Top 10 stocks today, all right, um, that are hitting a new 52-week high. And look at what they're doing. Look at their percentage moves. These stocks are moving. How about running these every night? How about running these every night and track them the next day? How about that? Uh, that's one way to go. I like David says use RT, but for the purposes of what you said, um, we're, we're at two cents, uh, what, to see if a trending stocks that are all-time highs. So here's the 52-week high. That's one part of it. Now watch this. I can add to this. Stocks, uh, RT, trending higher, for five days. So now I'm looking at stocks hitting a new 52 week high. Now I wanna make sure that the trend was picking up. Let's run it. Let's go see if I got anything. That's a great question too since I found one. I found one. Let's go look at that stock, view the stock graph. For those people who are not on the 99 cent trial, you see how quickly I did that? Did you see how quickly I did that? Look at the stock. Above the 20-day, moving up higher. RT moving up higher. All of this on good volume. Two cent. Is that what you were looking for? So I used a combination of stocks hitting a new high and trending RT. Two cent. Is that what you're looking for? All right. For anybody in this room who does not have the 99 cent trial, see how quickly I can answer a question on the fly? Because the software is that flexible. Because the software is that flexible. So I'm just putting that out there. Just putting that out there, and hopefully, two cent, I answered your question. All right, and that's just within the Unisearch tool to be able to do that. All right, um, tell you this: if that's not, if that's all the questions you're going to ask, Unisearch is the greatest search engine on demand. There you go. There you go. All right, let's go back to the graphs. And this is for you. Let's go talk about what stocks you want to take a look at. Start putting it into the chat now. I've got some stocks that I've been looking at throughout the chat that I am going to put in. All right, so before you start typing in your stocks, look at the stocks that I'm typing in. Some of these are what you've been asking me for since we started. So before you start typing in your stocks, wait. Look at what we got first because I want to let you know that I've been looking at all your stocks that you've been asking me to put in. All right, so let's take a look and see if I've got and if I'm putting your stock up there. All right, let's go see if I'm putting your stock up there. And if I'm not, then you can go type in the stock, all right? Thank you for listening. You guys stopped right on the dime. That's what I'm talking about. I love it when you guys listen. I do love it when you guys listen. All right, so those are the stocks that I'm putting in. Uh, REGI is already in the list. David, did I just say wait and look to see what stocks are up there? All right, so now some of the stocks that I didn't put up in there. Apps, ah, sigh. Apps, uh, HL, let's do that again. HL, comma, apps, comma, Neo is already up there. Zoom is already up there. Hmm, I just commended you guys for listening, but you weren't listening. MRNA, only a couple of more. INTC, um, new person. I need a new person. Abby, CRM, comma, one more new person. Rodney, IIPR is already up in there. Uh, uh, TSCO, one more stock, new person. G -E -V -O. Say again? GEVO. -E -E All right, that's it. All right, so any stock that I did not put in the list, again, Joey's going to put a link in there for a free stock analysis report. SRNE, I do want to look at. Uh, Joey's going to put in a link for a free stock analysis report. Fill that out, you will get a full stock analysis 
on any stock. All right, let's go put a three-month graph. Let's get through them. Cash, big move up today. We did look at that. This was an earnings play. This was an earnings play. We did take a look at that in the jockey club this morning. It got me in and got me out pretty quickly. Nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average. Love the volume and love the RT. Uh, this is a nice play. I would go 12 cents higher than the high. All right. Uh, Heckler Mining. Gold is a tough place to be. I'm not bullish on gold. Uh, Vector Vest is not bullish on gold. The dollar's got to go down. And gold is a safe haven for when a dollar does go down. It's not the time to be in gold yet. Not yet. And Hecla Mining is one of those gold stocks that's telling you the story. It's definitely telling you the story. So I'm not feeling uh, gold stocks right now. DR Harton, the builders were rocking and rolling. See this uptrend? And then, which was a good opportunity to get out. How about when the uptrend was broken? A couple of things happened at this point. The uptrend was broken and the stock's price went below the 20-day exponential moving average. Was that a beautiful day right there? That was the development of a perfect storm to get out right there on 1021. And you'd been a happy person uh, taking your profits out of this in this stock that was in a hot industry. Man, oh man, that was it right there. The price broke down below that trend line and it went below the 20-day exponential moving average. That was it right there. That was beautiful. All right, what other stocks are in here? Intel, woo, not feeling that right now. The stock's price broke below. After earnings, Intel broke below the 20-day exponential moving average. This is where you always want to, now whether a stock goes up or down after earnings, having that built-in protection of the protective put protects you when the stock price drops that low. And look at the price of the stock go down, down, down. This would help you to offset uh, any, um, price depreciation by way of the put, all right? Intel is not a good stock to be in right now. This is sell recommendation below the 20-day exponential moving average. Earnings is falling precipitously. Stocks RT below one, not a right time to be in it. Whereas I look at QDEL, uh, nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average, did pull back one day, but look at that rise back up. Earnings play, open candle, watch a little bit of indecision, relative timing above one, earnings looks great. Ah, the volume is not there, very interesting in the volume. Let me zoom that in a little bit. Yeah, now we'll see volume move a little bit more. The stock is pulled back. If you're in it, and you're using a little bit of a longer term play, it's not below the 20 day exponential moving average right now. All right, so just be patient and hold on. Hold on, Sloopy, hold on, hold on, Snoopy, hold on. All right, uh, TSCO, which is a beautiful, stock, just not the right time to be in it. Stock was in our jockey club. Karen, are you in here? I know Karen gave me this stock in our jockey club. I don't know if Karen is here. Right now, it's a tough time to be in it. I love the earnings per share. If I like this as a longer term play, put this on a one year graph. I love this as a longer term play. When the stock's price starts to pull down like this, this is a great time to sell a covered call on the stock without having to get out of the stock. And the covered call, you do it over and over, sell it again month after month after month. That helps to absorb some of the pullback in the stock without having to get out of it. But look at this upward time period. I love it. 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 All right. So let's go put this back on a three month graph. Let's go to the next stock. OSTK overstock. Whew. Uh, was this an earnings play? Yeah, it looks like it. That's not good at all. A big pull back down. And even prior to that, it was hovering with that 20 day exponential moving average up and down a little bit. <clears throat> now a more pronounced down on big volume. RT is moving down and just doesn't look good. I wouldn't be in it right now. The stock has been a sell prior to that big down date as well. Uh, let's go to Salesforce. Beware of some profit taking that happened. It didn't really happen on that profit taking, uh, but the stock pulled back, moved around that 20 day currently below, moving further down. I love the earnings per share, but you know, another good statement. Sometimes it's a bad time to be in a good stock. Earnings looks good on the stock. May not be the right time to be in it. RT is still above one, but look at the pullback of where it is. It is moving uh, slowly but surely down. RT is not below one yet, but getting there. All right, but definitely price action is showing me below the 20-day exponential moving average. On the other side, Generac, along with the same stock, ENPH, both of those are in that same field. Generac looks good. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, clearly above the 20-day exponential moving average now, moving higher, love the earnings per share. Watch the, um, watch 
the relative timing though. Relative timing is starting to pull back. That could be the beginning of a bearish divergence on the stock as the stock's price is moving higher, but the stock's RT is moving lower. Something to keep your eyes on. That's all I'm telling you. Something to keep your eyes on is the stock's price is moving up, RT is moving down. Keep your eyes on that. All right, if you're in the stock, leave it alone, but watch that little trend line right there. Once it breaks below, two things can happen. It should break below the trend line and below the 20-day exponential moving average. Once that happens, that's probably a good time to get out of the stock. RT is moving down. Let's go to the next stock, IPHI. Big jump up, earnings play. Be, always be careful on the stock that gaps up that much on the earnings play because what am I getting? Giving a little bit of pullback, right? Big wick at the top, bigger wick at the bottom, which shows me a little bit more bearish pressure than bullish. Uh, it shows me a little bit more bullish pressure than bearish pressure. Clearly above, but the stock's price closed yesterday at 110 and went all the way up to a high of 143. Yeah, there's going to be some profit taken in. That's a big jump up. All right, but overall, I with a good positive earnings, let's go see what happens tomorrow if it's got the wherewithal to keep running up. GEVO, energy clean, moving sideways. All right, be careful with that. It is definitely moving sideways. But always be careful where the stock is moving sideways. You'd rather be in a stock that's even moving up and playing it to the upside or moving down and playing it to the downside. All right, let's go look at the next stock, REGI. Also doing a little bit of sideways move, but bouncing right off that level of the 20-day exponential moving average. Jump below. Today's activity, it got back up. Woo. All right, could you still stay in the stock if you're in it? Yes, watch the trend, though, from the high moving down. I'd like to see this trend broken. All right, if I connect these two highs, I definitely want to see this trend broken. Let's go put that a little darker so that you can see it. See that trend line? From that high, the stock is trending lower. It's hitting lower highs. Let's go see if REGI can break above that trend line. RT is already above one. Earnings are still good. If I'm going to get back into it, if I'm not in it now, let's see if it can break above that trend line. What graph layer are you using? I'm just creating my own where I'm looking at the price in candles. I'm showing a 20-day exponential moving average, earnings, volume, and RT. I put all of this stuff on my graph, Will, all right? because this is, um, I think, the simplest way to make a decision on any stock. Uh, Ecom. Nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average, pulling back today. It wasn't an earnings play. RT is pulling back. If you're in the stock, let that 20-day exponential moving average manage the trade, all right? This keeps you from panicking. Overall, staying above that 20-day exponential moving average and moving higher, if you're in it, let that 20-day exponential moving average manage your trade. If I'm not in it, let's see if the stock can get out of its own way and move up higher before I pull the trigger. All right, apps was beautiful, was beautiful. That's a great opportunity to not be greedy. Knowing that the stock is above the 20-day all of this time and finally breaks below, that's a great opportunity to take your profits off the table. And if you didn't do it, you know what you are? Greedy. I just looked at you and said, you're greedy. This is why I teach you guys to learn not to be greedy, all right? Because you know what happens when you get greedy? Yeah. That's exactly how you feel afterwards, all right? That was a great opportunity to get out. Wait for a new opportunity to get in. Wait for a new opportunity to get in. Don't be greedy. It's an emotion, all right? It's emotion. Don't get into that. All right, next stock is NEO. I'm liking NEO. NEO is a good, in that EV, in that whole EV field, nice open day today, moving up. Uh, earnings is getting better. All right, earnings is still negative, but they're less negative than they were three months ago. RT is above one, rising um, volume on the stock today. I like that, 12 cents higher than the high. 12 cents higher. I like Raman says he sold apps. That was a good opportunity to get out. Uh, Neo, on the other hand, is a good way to go. Really, James? Greed is good. No, greed is only good if you win. Greed is only good if you win. All right, that's all I got to say. And sometimes, many times, I ain't going to say sometimes, many times your greed puts you into a losing position. All right, so no, I'm not going to tell you to be greedy. I'm trying to teach you how to hold on as much of your money as you possibly can. 
mRNA, earnings play. Nice upward move, a lot of pullback. Look at the big wick at the top of the candle. A lot of selling pressure. All right, now the stock's real body looks like it's below the 20-day exponential moving average. Be careful with the stock if you own it. Next one, Zoom. Zoom is great for um, the whole coronavirus. It's been rocking and rolling. A lot of people, churches are doing it. Everybody, me, mama is on Zoom. You go on Zoom for anything? Mm -mm. You got no friends, do you? No, he does, Joey doesn't have any friends. Joey, am I your friend? Mm -hmm. Joey says I'm not his friend. <laughs> Uh, am I not your friend? You just said I didn't have I'm your name. buddy. Say, I'm your buddy, Gordon. I'm buddy, pal. All right, there you go. So, um, I use Teams, though. Huh? I use Teams. You used to. Well, we use Teams here at work, but for church, we do use Zoom. Uh, and Teams is a Microsoft product. Um, but Zoom right now, if you're in Zoom, today might be a good day to get out. Take your profits off the table. Take your profits off the table. All right, uh, what other stocks are in here? Peloton. This was a good coronavirus stock. A lot of people are at home working out because a lot of gyms are closing down. But maybe they're plateauing. Maybe they've already plateaued, but currently below the 20-day exponential moving average. Folks, I show you this over and over on all of these stocks. Don't, don't let your, your winners become losers. This is a good opportunity to get out of the stock, get out of a stock that was rising. SRNE in the in the pharmaceutical space, that was a good time to get out when uh, the stock's price went below the 20-day exponential moving average, which was on 10-14-2020. That was a great time to get out of the stock. And if you didn't, then you're still in it right now. All right. Glenn, what's up, Mike? What's up? What's up, Kevin? I haven't seen you for a minute. I haven't seen you for a minute. All right, I'm done. And Joey. I was very succinct in what I did, and you see what, how much time it took, right? I was to the, oh, no, 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 I don't want, don't even make that face at me. All right, Joey wants, this is the way Joey wants, I want you to know this. This is the way Joey wants me to do these presentations. All right, see the color guard? Got a little yellow here, a little red here. Look at it, and then move on to the next story. That's the way Joey wants me to do these stories, and Joey is like, why can't you do it within an hour? It's because I give you guys a lot of information because this is what you're here for. All right, this is what you're here for. Daniel, did you not hear what I just said about Neo? Stop. What did I just say? 12 cents higher than the high. That's what I said. That's what I said right there. All right, the stock is nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average. Look at the uh, volume. Look, I said everything was good about it. 12 cents higher than the high. Is anybody listening? Do you guys listen to what I say? Joey, you listen to what I say? Exactly. I try to be very good on trying to at least give you on what you look, what to look for, on what to look for. Ninja said, thanks for the lecture. Wow. Is that a good thing, Ninja? I don't know. I don't know if that was a good thing. I don't know. Was, was he, would you just kick me a little bit? Listen, I try to give you guys useful information. That's my job here. You can be on any other place in YouTube but you choose to be here at two o'clock, I try to make it worth your while, folks. All right? That's what I want to do. I don't want to be about jibber-jabber. I want to give you information, especially on the stocks that you asked me to look at. All right? So, uh, Neo, nothing wrong with Neo. Neo's going up. I think that was an earn. Well, I don't know if that was, that wasn't an earnings play, but the stock is clearly above the 20 day moving average. I like that. I like using the 20 day moving average on an end of day basis to help me to manage the stock. It's done a great job keeping me in it. Um, RT is clearly above one. Uh, fundamentally, the sound, the stock is not sound, but from a trade perspective and using that 20 day moving average, it's a great stock to be in. All right, what should you buy on Friday? I don't know. That's not what I do here. That, that's not what I, I'm not the one that tells you what's the, what, hey, go buy this stock, go sell this stock. That's not what I do. My job is to teach you how to analyze any stock in the VectorVest software. That's my job. So with that, I think I'm about done. All right, it's before 3.30, Joey. I'm about done. He's going to change the screen. I want to say thank you guys for being here, uh, taking the time to listen to, uh, to what I talk about every every Thursday. I thank you for the input on the stocks that uh, you give me to look at. I give you the information and then you turn around and go, well, should I buy it? Hmm. <laughs> I ain't a broker. I can't tell you what to do or what not to do. But if I give you the data and I'm showing you the graph after graph after graph of what to look for, then you know you know what to say. You know what to do. 
And everybody in this room invests differently. Take that into consideration. A stock that I may like may not be a stock that Joey likes for a different reason. And that's fine. That's fine. My job is not to say, go buy that stock tomorrow. And I will never do that. And if that's what you come here for, that's not going to happen. But if you're willing to listen to what the VectorVest system can do for you, then I'm all, then you're all here, you're, you're here and that's what I'm all about. All right, so um, can you say about Neo? What did I just say about Neo? You should think about buying it. It's at that uh, 12, 12 cents higher than the high. That's it in a nutshell. All right, so with that, you guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting um, the VectorVest YouTube channel, number one. Number two, if you like the content and you haven't already done it, please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. This is the kind of content we give. I'm not the only one who presents here on YouTube. We have a lot of information that we put out there. Uh, we hate Joey. Really? You don't hate Joey. Don't hate Joey. You can't hate Joey. Joey's my friend. Joey is, is Joey's my buddy. Joey's my buddy. I love Joey to death. I give him a lot of flack because he can handle it. But Joey is really good at what he does, all right? So if anybody hates Joey, you have to deal with me. I got you, Joey. Don't make me put the gloves on and have to deal with you, all right? Just don't make me have to do it. With that, folks, um, I love you guys to death. We both do. Thank you for being here. We look forward to being here next Thursday. We do this all over again. Do this all over again. So, adios, vivederci, ciao. Au revoir, sayonara. Aloha. Uh, salam, shalom, namaste. For everyone who's uh, been affected by Hurricane Zeta, hopefully you're being safe. Continue to be safe. Uh, my prayers are with each and every one of you. Have a great weekend, folks. And uh, see ya. We're out of here. <laughs>